King Jig, man. They already know what it is. 3G's up, get guap, gang, guap up. That's the motto. You know what I'm saying? The difference between us and them is we us and they them. I'm me and they them. What's up? You feel me? You see what I do. I'm out, like, I got a rap sheet, man. I got a real rap sheet and I got a track record that's good. Like, I'm not just running around here on no bozo shit. My music speaks for itself. What's up? You feel me? I'm not running around trying to sound like everybody, homie. I'm sounding like me. I'm saying, geez, like, when you hear my music, what you hear? When you hear my music, what artist could you compare my, my music to? Like, I'm saying? That's, that's the difference between me and them. You feel me? I'm not trying to sound like these, that's what they trying to do. I'm not trying to do that, man. I mean, no disrespect to nobody that's doing whatever they doing, but I'm going to do what I do the right way. Hip hop me. You feel me? This is what hip hop is missing. They missing me. Because I ain't let the streets down yet. That's 100% certified. I'm talking about with everything. So that's what separates me from them. My bars is facts. What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like the video if you appreciate the content that Paul Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today we back with a profile piece. This one is on King Jig. In this video, we're going to talk about his early years coming up in Queens. Then we'll take a look at his entry into the rap game and the different artists he would associate with. After that, we will discuss his last jail bid that kind of slowed his momentum down that he had been building for years. And finally, we will highlight his return to the streets before breaking down the situation that sadly took his life. King Jig, real name Anthony Edwards, is of Jamaican descent and from Far Rockaway, Queens. Far Rockaway is a part of Queens that's pretty much tucked away from the rest of the city. Growing up there can be a bit territorial as there are a bunch of different housing projects and gangs in a close proximity to one another. Far Rock also produced his fair share of rappers over the years. Rappers like Stack Bundles, Chink Drugs, and even MC Search have all put on for this slept on part of Queens. But unfortunately for Far Rock, Stack Bundles and Chink's Drugs were both killed right when it looked that they were about to take off career-wise. King Jig, who knew both Stack and Chinks, was somewhat following their footsteps when it came to rapping, but he would also have one foot in the streets throughout his career. From young, King Jig was a hustler and focused on making a dollar, but being in the streets would cost him as he would do multiple bids early on in his life. His street slash rap crew was named the Get Guap Gang or Get Guap Entertainment when it came to the music. King Jig's loyalty to the Guap Gang was consistent throughout his career, even when he linked up with bigger name rappers like Trav MBB and Jim Jones. The perks of running around with Jim Jones and his bird gang movement started to pay off as more people started to recognize and pay attention to King Jig's music. Interviews with K Slay and posts on hip hop blog sites started to get his name more out there in certain hip hop circles in New York City. King Jig also had a pretty good work ethic and dropped a steady stream of mixtapes and videos to promote himself. But just as it looked like he might be ready to take his career to the next level, King Jig would end up going back to jail in April of 2016. He would serve a little over four years and come home in June of 2020. Trav was around through the whole bed and was even there to pick Jig up from prison. King Jig was still repping Guap Gang along with MBB, which is Trav's label. Jim Jones was also back in the picture as you could see Jig linking up with Jim on his Instagram a few times after his release. A bunch of music would follow with visuals to match. As you could tell, King Jig was hungry to get back to the spot he had musically before he went to jail. King Jig had returned right back to the hood in Far Rockaway, Queens, where he felt most comfortable, and got in a relationship with a woman from his neighborhood. He was slowly getting back into his groove and things were looking good as he was expecting a baby boy in the near future with his pregnant girlfriend. But then tragedy would strike in July 2022, when King Jig would be shot and killed while sitting in his car at the intersection of Beach 38th Street and Norton Avenue. The shooting took place at 10 in the morning and witnesses said Jig had just got in his car a few minutes before and that the shooter had fled the scene in a white Jeep Grand Cherokee. King Jig was 36 years old at the time of his death. A couple months after the shooting, an arrest would be made when Jamal Brown, also a far rockaway, was arrested in Harlem and charged with killing King Jig. He will be indicted in October of 2022 and is currently being held on Rikers Island awaiting trial. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. This is a quick profile piece on King Jig, real name Anthony Edwards out of Far Rockaway, Queens. You know, if you listen to the situation, it was happening in the morning, his death. And uh, he said as soon as he got in his car, the shooter ran up on his on his driver's side and just shot a bunch of um, shot him a bunch of times. I think he said it hit him in the head, he died on the scene. 
Now it sounds like he was basically, you know, the who was the, the shooter was waiting on him or something, like, you know, just just laying on him. Maybe they had some, you know, beef before. Who knows? He's still he's still innocent until proven guilty, could be in that the case hasn't went to trial yet, but he is locked up and indicted for the murder. So we have to see what the outcome of that is. But it looked like basically, you know, maybe it was some type of beef going on, who knows? And he ran up on him in the morning, waiting seen probably knew his car was a BMW. You know, you get you know you always get identified by your car. It's one of the simplest ways to get identified. He sat sat on his car, waited. King Jay came in the morning, you know, maybe to move the car, do whatever he had to do, do what he got to do. And he ran up on him and shot him and killed him. You know, now, Far Rock is a rough place. You know, it's cursed, especially when it comes to rappers. Like, you had two of the biggest rappers that was about to blow up and do their thing and stack bundles and change drugs who were both part of the same group when they first hit the scene with the Rockaway Riot Squad, Dumb and Bino, um, Core 2 Gs and all of them. That was, they was messing with DJ Clue, as long stack was and everything. You know, Chinks ended up messing with French and all that. So they ended up losing their life. You know, King Jig wasn't as big as, as Chinks' stack. But, you know, he was running around. He was with Jim. He was with Trav. He was doing this thing also. And he put a lot of a lot of music out. A bunch of mixtapes. You know, a bunch of videos on YouTube. You could check them out. And, you know, he ended up losing his life also. He had a good work ethic, though, when it came to the music. That's one thing I could definitely say about King Jig, man. It was probably all, you know, independently funded. But he put a lot of stuff out. I know he was working with a um, Capo Mob, shooting all his videos and all that. But he had a good work that they consistently drop music when he was free. When he was in jail, you know, that he sat up for different parts of his, of his life. But when he was free, he was definitely dropping a lot of music. You go check it on YouTube. He got a bunch ranging from a, a, a nice time span. He dropped music consistently. Now, him and Trav had a strong relationship. I was watching an interview. They said they knew each other, like, from school. That Trav said he actually started rapping because of Jig and all that. But, you know, Trav... You know, more, knew how to get in them circles more. He's more out there. So he, like, you know, had a bigger buzz and started hanging out with bigger people. And, you know, I think he brought Jig along, you know, as a shade of show, his love and respect. Trav was there, picked him up from jail. He had, you know, they got a good relationship. So, you know, shout out to him. And uh, like I said, man, if you want to get a feel for who King Jig was, just go listen to his music. You get a feel of his music, feel his personality. You go hear what he got to say. And he lost his life, sadly. But, you know, he left, he left behind a lot of music. He got kids, you know what I'm saying? My condolences to them. He got a family. So definitely my condolences to everybody who, who got love for King Jig. But this is What's the Number TV, man. It's the only place where, you know, we like to shine light on people that everybody else doesn't do stories on. That's what What's the Number TV. We pride ourselves on that. We like being the only one with it. You know, we do stories on everybody, but we also like doing stories that nobody got. And this is one of them, man. King Jig, Far Rockaway Queens, you know, Get Guap Gang. You understand what I'm saying? So it's What's the Number TV. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go follow the Instagram. Go follow Batty Bills on IG, my partner on the channel. Salute to Federal A. Any business, Poe Row, what's the numbers at yahoo.com. And we on our way to 100,000, man, 97K strong. We'll be there in no time. More content on its way. And make sure you're tuned in. Subscribe here. Subscribe to the live stream and clip channel also, man. We working. What's the numbers, CV, your boy Poe Row. I'll be back before you know it, man. I'm out of here. Peace.